Brother Dietz, please. The final illustration is recorded at Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. And that is the parable of the sheep and the goats. That applies to those of us with an earthly hope. There, Jesus emphasizes our need to be loyal and to give our full support to his anointed brothers that are on the earth today. Thank you very much. So with that foundation, let us consider our first subheading. The master gives his slaves a fortune. And we want to commend you. Brother Davey mentioned he was hoping something could be said because you are getting the message for the most part, even though we have imperfection that we're all dealing with, because when the chairman, uh, session chairman says it's time to sit down for the music interlude, that's not time for getting up and having a hug fest. <laughs> no. So we've been trying to get the message across for a while. I think we got it right this year. And we want to commend you, because overall you did very good. Keep up the good work. When the chairman said, we show respect to Jehovah because music is a serious part of worshiping him. But we got to get that message. And if you sit down and listen to the music and you look at the pictures that are synchronized with it, if you came in feeling a little down, there's no way you can leave feeling down. And then after that, the talks follow. So spread the word. When that's said at your assemblies, whether it's a regional or not, that's what God wants us to do. See? Sit down. Show respect to Jehovah. It's music sacred music. You're not at a concert. <laughs> you go to a concert, that's your business. You want to gab and march around there, but this is sacred. So rather than focus on skills that we may not have, we do our best with what we do have. You know, as we sing today, Sound waves will fill this room, they'll bounce off the walls, they'll accumulate, they'll dissipate. And I'm quite sure Jehovah could trace every one of them back to its source, your vocal cords or mine. But as we sing, do we imagine that Jehovah is listening for the accuracy of our pitch, for how well-timed our rhythm is, whether our tone is pleasant to the human ears that surround us, we don't imagine Jehovah doing that. But we do know that as we sing, Jehovah will be doing what he so often does. He'll be reading our hearts. How will yours read? I'm so tired. I'm really not up to talking to anyone tonight. All I want to do is just find my seat and enjoy the meeting. 
I know Jehovah will understand if I just... Joanne, I am so glad to see you. I could really use your help with preparing for my next Bible study with Lori. Well, actually, you know, I was trying to just get to my... Okay, so let me tell you. Wow. She didn't even hear me. I don't need this right now. This is really trying my patience. Excuse me. Um, Larry? We had such a good time this morning. Always enjoy working with you in service. Same here. And I hope Miss Johnson comes to the meeting this Sunday. That would be so nice. Hey, did you ever find your sunglasses? No, I looked all over. I have no idea where they could be. Hey. Hey, Susan. Good to see you. Good to see you. You left these at my house last night. <laughs> Can you believe it? I what? Know. Susan had another gathering at her home last night? And I wasn't invited again. I just don't get it. Really had to be yours. Thanks again. I'm always leaving my stuff behind. And Helen, how are you doing? I'm fine. Sorry, I got it. Helen? What just happened? I have no idea. Larry, perhaps you've heard. Uh, Faye Carter and David Thomas have recently gotten engaged, mm -hmm. and they want to use the Kingdom Hall for their wedding. So perhaps uh, you and Kevin and myself, we could get together for a few minutes tonight, and then they could move forward uh, with their wedding plans. Tonight? How many times are you going to do this to us, Tom? Do what? Keep having these unscheduled meetings. Look, maybe you're not so eager to get home and spend time with your family, but some of us are. Not want to spend time with my family? What is that supposed to mean? He is way out of line. I should set him straight right now. Bill. Hey, Carl, how are you? Good, how are you feeling? Good. Awesome, Alex. Hey. I didn't get a chance to tell you last week, but that was a really nice job you did on your talk. Yeah, good job. Oh, thanks, guys. Believe me, I've been so busy, it was hard to make time to prepare it. Oh, tell me about it. I think the whole congregation has had a lot going on lately. <laughs> yeah, it has. That's true, but I think I've been extra busy. So. Why, what's going on? You're not sick, are you? <laughs> No, no, it's nothing like that. It's all this theocratic stuff. Pioneering, congregation duties, and other things. Like this Saturday, I need to be at the Kingdom Hall all afternoon. And... Saturday here? <laughs> Why? Wait a second. I see where this is going. Isn't there a circuit assembly rehearsal here on Saturday? Oh, yeah, that's right. So you're on the program. Well, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say. Well, you just did. So what is it? You're in a demonstration, an uh, interview? You can't just leave us hanging. Okay. Well, it's not just an interview. It's an interview with a reenactment. And then they're going to ask me questions at the end. <laughs> I'm actually on stage for most of the part. Come to think of it, guys, I am the part. You are the part? You sure you're not stretching that a little bit? Uh, no, I don't think I am. Okay, Brother Jones' part is 10 minutes. I'm up there for six. That's more than half the part. Anyway, so let me tell you how it's supposed to go. They're gonna ask me that about this time. I did this amazing job out in field service. I walk up to the door, of course, I ring the bell, but what happens, it doesn't work. I knock louder than any man ever had. We're gonna discuss how we can follow the example of Jehovah and Jesus and imitate them. Jehovah, first of all, always sets the perfect example. Uh, of course, he is jealous in that he exacts our exclusive devotion, but Jehovah is never envious of the success of others. Never does Jehovah brag about his accomplishments. For example, on a very clear night, we may look up at the stars and the moon. It's beautiful, it's amazing. But Jehovah doesn't brag about these things. Actually, if we want to learn more about them, we have to study them. We have to look into the subject to learn about it. Jehovah do just doesn't go on and on about it. So the idea of delegation is clearly spelled out scripturally. By the way, the Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy to continue to train and to teach to those that wanted to reach out and qualify to be used. Jesus' window of opportunity when he came to earth to start this pattern of delegation for the Christian congregation was short. It was only about three and a half years. So when Jesus was on earth, he had to look for opportunities in order to teach, and he had to try to identify tasks that his disciples and others could perform. How can we imitate that? 
As elders, are we looking for those who have the abilities and are willing to be used in the congregation? Patrice, the elders recently met and discussed what a fine example you're setting in the congregation. Thanks, Brother Ford. I'm trying to qualify to become a ministerial servant. That's excellent. And the elders would like to entrust you with further responsibilities. In fact, we'd like to invite you to take care of a very important assignment. Sure, anything. Well, Patrice, we'd like you to have a, a care for the upkeep of the Kingdom Hall. For example, we'd like you to arrive early, sweep the front entryway, restock the cleaning supplies, and after the meeting, we'd like you to ensure that all the trash has been emptied. Oh, okay. Can, can I get back to you on that? Of course, Patrice. We can talk more about the specifics of your assignment on Sunday, and I'll try to answer any questions you might have. Sweep up? <laughs> Empty the trash? I thought he said it was an important assignment. Don't the elders know that I'm a manager at the office where I work? I'm good at directing people and organizing. I'm not restocking cleaning supplies. I did tell Brother Ford that I would accept any assignment. What do I have against cleaning? If Jesus could wash the dirty feet of his apostles, I doubt we would have no problem sweeping up the dirt at our kingdom hall. Yes, if we feel entitled to special treatment for whatever reason, well, we should really consider what are the wages that we're actually entitled to. Well, according to Romans 6, verse 23, the wages sin pays is death. We've inherited sin, and that sentences us to death. So any work that Jehovah allows us to do in his service is really an undeserved kindness. But those that store treasures in heaven, see like all uh, those that are traveling in here did all sorts of things to sacrifice. There's so many here from Warwick Construction. See, you're, you're tucking it away in the heavenly bank, sacrificing other things. Oh, yeah. Lots going into the heavenly bank. Uh, you're becoming millionaires. <laughs> and you have peace of mind, joy, and refreshment. And it's, imagine now people resurrected and God willing, he'll keep that beautiful place for headquarters. And uh, they come to visit or resurrected ones, all that begins. Uh, what do you want to say? What, what were you doing before the great tribulation broke out? Well, I worked for IBM, I was a big executive, and they resurrected and say, I be what? <laughs> what? What is that? As opposed to sitting there and having a meal, what was it like to work there? He endured all the way to death on a torture stake for them. And really, he did that for everyone. So, what about us? What are we willing to endure for our brothers? And you know, the answer to that question will tell if we're truly imitating the love of Jehovah in Jesus. Why? Well, it's one thing to bear, believe, hope, or endure in this wicked world. We, we almost expect that. But this symposium is talking about having love among ourselves. Of course, that doesn't mean that we're not going to experience problems or have our differences. But like Jehovah and Jesus, we can bear up or put up with ones who disappoint us. When our brothers say or do something, we believe them. Oh, Alice. Oh, hi, Debbie. I've got to tell you what I just heard yesterday. Well, remember Bethany who used to attend some of our meetings years ago? Yes, and she started going back to the meetings again? Not at all. She left the man that she's living with to move in with another. Wait, you've been keeping in touch with her? Well, no, I haven't talked to her directly. But you know, word gets around. Anyway, can you believe it? Debbie, 
We both know Bethany has done a lot of bad things since she stopped attending the meetings. And I really hope she makes changes and comes back. But in the meantime, do you really think we should be spending our time talking about all the bad things she's doing right now? Well, probably not. I just figured, since we all grew up together, you want to know how far from the truth she's gotten. But Debbie, love does not rejoice over unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. You know what? You're right. Why talk about this? We have so many good things to talk about. Yes, we do. Like this morning. That's when I remember what you told me. Really? What did I say? Remember, you said, always be patient and kind. So I kindly pointed out the key words of scripture, and then after asking her the question again, I patiently waited for her to give me an answer, which, by the way, is not the easiest thing for me to do. But just when I thought that I couldn't wait any longer, she gave me the right answer. She got the point. I was so excited. But now I'm kind of wondering, does she really believe what she said? And if not, how am I going to help her to see the truth of the matter? Question. What is a powerful feature of the sign of Jesus' presence? Uh, Brother Gaetano, please. As the illustrations on the bottom of page 22 show, the preaching and teaching work is being done wherever people are found. Jesus Faithful followers are speaking to people in the formal ministry, informally, at places of business, and even remote areas. Excellent. It says, the glory of young men or women is their strength. So yes, Jehovah knows that you are strong for the most part. He also knows that you have a lot of energy and you also have a lot of opportunities that are open to you as a young person. So what does that mean? You have choices and decisions to make in life and in Jehovah's service. Now let's contrast that with worldly kids. Worldly kids are often not happy. Why? It's because they waste their energy, their time, and their resources. And your young ones uh, we've been entreating you. You've got to get that clear. Especially as you get older, the only way you're getting through this storm, the great one, is your relationship with God. Your personal relationship. Just like everybody else. Unless you're a toddler, and we know how Jehovah sanctify them. But as you get older, you are responsible. Remember the nice demo? We've mentioned that before. Well, I'm not ready to get baptized. Okay, let's hold off on your driver's license. What? I'm 16, what are you talking about? I'm ready, I know I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready for a driver's license, but you're not ready to dedicate your life. Hmm. Explain that one to heaven. this the master looking down and seeing his slaves busy in the work he had prescribed how do you think the master feels about it uh, brother Gaetano I think the master is pleased sister Tortorelli and as I reflect on the parable of the talents it makes me see more clearly the need to take this matter seriously you know what a responsibility and a privilege to be assisting those receiving the talents yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, we're in the time of the end. The fields are white for the harvest and the workers are busy. New question presents itself and that forms the basis of our new subheading. When will the master come to settle accounts? Jehovah has also written a prophecy about you and me thousands of years in advance. In the book of Revelation, we read that as a group, 
God's people would remain faithful and come out of Armageddon as loyal integrity keepers. Yes, Jehovah shows his love by telling his servants he believes in them. We want to spend our time in the righteous acts of Jehovah's people, encouraging us. It's food for us. And love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. What a strong point there, that Jehovah believes in us. When we even hear that, it gives us strength. So we trust our brothers, and we're willing to bear and endure inconveniences and even hardships in their behalf. When we display such love in our dealing with our brothers and sisters, it's just as Jesus intended. What's the situation today? Not all people own a home or have enough land to farm or to till or to cultivate. In cities, what do we find? Huge buildings with landlords and tenants. In the new world, what do we expect? Property will be allocated. You will not fear any sudden terror, nor the storm that's coming on the wicked. The storm, the Armageddon, is on them, not us. Say, not God's people. And then he's going to see to it that you're protected. And so with the angels, all that's organized. Heaven's ready. Don't worry about it. Hey, John, nice to see you again. Hey, if you don't have a seat already, we'd love to have you join us. Thanks. This is what, your fourth time here? Yeah, yeah, I've just, I've never seen anything like this before. Like what? Hello, John. I just wanted to say hi and tell you how glad I am to see you here. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you, too. And Jimmy. Hi, Brother Thompson. I want to thank you so much for that package you dropped off yesterday. Chloe and I really appreciate your thoughtfulness. Anytime, Brother Thompson, anytime. Sorry, don't mean to interrupt. Just wanted to come over and say hello to you both. John, really nice to see you here. Please keep coming. Thanks, I will. And Jim, as always, good to see you. Same here, Gary. We still on for tomorrow, right? Brother Harris, do you have a moment? Sure, Faye. How can we help you? Well, you probably heard by now. David and I got engaged this past weekend. We heard. Congratulations. We're so happy for both of you. Thanks so much. And since this is where I grew up, it would mean a lot to us if we could get married in this kingdom hall. So we were hoping, since you're the coordinator of the body of elders, you'd be able to let us know, today, if we can use the hall. Then David and I can start working on our wedding invitations. David asked me to give you this letter, making our okay. official request. Oh yeah, this is a good letter. This gives me all the information I need. And Faye, I can't imagine you getting married anywhere else. You can count on the Kingdom Hall. And I'll let the elders know, I've already given my approval, but let David know we're looking forward to your big day. Thanks so much, Brother Harris. I knew you'd come through for me. Do you think the elder might have proudly overstepped his measure of authority in that situation? Let's give him another chance. Let's look at the same scenario, but we'll see him deal with this situation with humility. Yes, this is a good letter. This has all the information that we need. I'm going to check with the other elders and we're gonna discuss it, then we'll get right back to you. Oh, you, you mean you can't tell me right now? I thought since you're the coordinator, you'd have the authority to, you know. I understand, but there is a theocratic arrangement that we all have to follow, even the elders. And the arrangement is for the entire service committee to discuss this, consider the matter thoroughly, and before any approval is given. So I don't have the authority to make a decision on my own. Of course, that makes sense. I understand. The drama is in the style of a stage play. Thus, some of the sets and props may resemble those used on a theater stage. 
We know you will benefit from this presentation of some of the fascinating accounts recorded in the Gospels. My name is Messiper, and I am that shepherd boy, 40 years older. Yes, I was there when the angels announced the birth of the Messiah. Later, I became one of Jesus' followers, and I came to be an overseer in the Christian congregation in Jerusalem. You may think that after seeing with my own eyes a multitude of angels announcing the birth of Jesus, my faith would be rock solid. In reality, over the past 40 years, I have had to strengthen my faith constantly by reminding myself of the reasons why I believe. How do I know that Jesus is the Messiah? How do I know that Christians have the truth? Jehovah does not want worship that is based on blind belief or credulity. You too can benefit by asking yourself, how do I know that Jehovah's Witnesses have the truth? First, what is God's purpose for the Messiah? Oh, that's an easy one, my son. I'm holding here a scroll of Isaiah. Here it says, to the increase of his rulership and to peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and on his kingdom, in order to establish it firmly and to sustain it through justice and righteousness from now on and forever. Yes, it is quite clear that the Messiah will rule over God's people. He will liberate us from Gentile oppression, reestablish the Davidic throne, and bring everlasting peace. May I see the scroll, please? This is a beautiful passage. I especially like this part where it says, For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and the rulership will rest on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Yes, Eternal Father, Eternal Peace. But that leads me to another question. If the Messiah comes to liberate us and to rule over us forever, why is it that here, just a few lines earlier, Isaiah speaks of the Messiah as a stumbling rock to both houses of Israel, as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem? And did Isaiah not prophesy also that the Messiah would be cut off from the land of the living, crushed to death, and counted among the transgressors? What does all of this mean? In this synagogue, that Jesus for the first time read portions of God's inspired word. I imagine young Jesus coming to this synagogue to examine the holy writings carefully and to meditate on them. Jesus had a flawless memory, even as a child. So imagine how much he must have learned. I can also picture young Jesus, perhaps 13 or 14 years old, standing before his teachers in the synagogue and reading publicly from the scriptures. Listen, O Israel, Jehovah our God is one Jehovah. This is no prophet, he is just another imposter. A lowly carpenter could not possibly be a true prophet of God. This Jesus is nothing but a deceiver, a pretender. Remove him from the synagogue. Throw him off the cliff. never should have put John to death. Antipas, what is the matter? Are you well? Eubulus, I had a dream last night. In the dream, this, this Jesus of Nazareth appeared, lifted me up in the air, then dropped me to the ground. And while I was on my knees, he pulled out a long, long, heavy sword and chopped off my head. What? Calm down, please. Judas, what have people told you? Pardon me, Lord, what's your question? Judas, what are you doing? Counting money? This is important. You should listen to what Jesus is saying. Who gave you permission to speak? I know what I'm doing. 
Lord, I'm just making sure we have enough money for lodging. Surely we don't want to sleep outdoors tonight. John is right, Judas. Please listen carefully. This is very important. Matthew, what are the tax collectors saying? My husband and I decided to join Jesus as his disciples. I do not believe you. You are too wise to join that sect. And how is it that you are so convinced about the miracles? Think about it. How do you know the woman was really sick? All you know is what she told you. How do you know that she was really healed? And even if she was, was it the result of a miracle? The sick woman seemed very sincere and factual. I do believe her. And what about Jairus' daughter? She was dead, dead. And Jesus brought her back to life. I was hoping you would bring that up. Remember, I was there. I saw when Jesus expelled everyone from the house. He went in with his three friends and the girl's parents. That is all. Who knows what really happened in that room? Exactly. The girl was alive not long before Jesus arrived at the house. How do we know that she was really dead? True. <laughs> Jesus himself said that she was not dead. I heard it myself. Brothers, please do not identify me as the Christ to anyone. Do not say that I am the Son of God or the Messiah. Let Jehovah reveal it to those who have faith. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> He said, concerning that day and hour, nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son, but only the Father. He urged us to keep awake, because we do not know when the appointed time is. Exactly. Well, now that Jesus has been resurrected and has a spiritual body, and undoubtedly has special communication with his heavenly Father, could it be that the Father has revealed to his Son the day and the hour? Greetings, my brothers. My heart is full of joy as I see all of you gathered here with me. Lord, we wanted to ask you, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? Do you now know the day and the hour? Peter, I know that this matter of the day and the hour weighs heavily on your mind. This is the second time you've asked. All of you, listen carefully. It does not belong to you to know. It's nice to see you this morning. Yeah, thanks. But, you know, one thing I don't understand is why do you people keep coming back over and over again? Actually, I felt the same way until I became aware of what the Bible says. It contains a warning for all of us so we can prepare for what will happen in the near future. It's much like the warning messages we receive before a big storm approaches. Any that are of the remnant are still on earth, they're already sealed. You saw that in the watchtower today, and we've said that in the past. Been sealed, guaranteed life in heaven. So when the nations God comes after, this coalition of nations, those anointed that are still on earth, boom. So during that time, they're in heaven. It's not time to meet former friends and chat because they're in the middle of this great storm because all those called, all the anointed are going to be there, the 144,000. And that's who Christ Jesus is going to use to conquer. How has this article refined our understanding of the parable of the talents? Brother, Sister Purim, please. Well, our former thinking was that in 1919, Jesus would, be rewarded, would reward his anointed slaves on earth by entrusting them with increased responsibility. But now our modified understanding is that when Christ comes in the future, he will reward his faithful anointed slaves by raising them to heaven. Okay, Brother Buddha. 
There was also an adjustment in whom was represented by the wicked and sluggish slave. Originally, it was thought that this wicked and sluggish slave represented those who refused to engage in the preaching work in the 1914 era. The adjusted understanding helps us to see that Jesus was not foretelling that a group of anointed followers would make up a wicked slave class. Rather, Jesus was giving a warning to his followers about what would happen if they thought and acted in a way that would cause him to view them as wicked or sluggish. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Zeal includes not only enthusiasm, but a steadfast refusal to tolerate rivalry. It's passionate. It's intense at times. And some Oriental languages describe the root word for zeal as if a heart was burning or a burning heart. However, zeal is more than the zeal you might have for your favorite sport team. Oh, they're heroes one moment, the bums the next, right? <laughs> Rather, it includes a zeal based on an exclusive right or claim, such as a husband or a wife has on their mate. So someone who is zealous for pure worship has a strong urge, a burning heart to protect God's name and cannot stand anything that could bring reproach on Jehovah. Has authority over his own will and has made the decision in his own heart to remain unmarried, he will do well. As the Apostle Paul mentioned, those who are single can have constant devotion to the Lord without distraction. They normally have more time to study and to meditate. They have more freedom to accept a variety of assignments in Jehovah's service. Now, on the other hand, many who are single and do not serve Jehovah use their singleness to achieve selfish or material goals. People look at you, and even brothers and sisters, and feel a bit of pity for you maybe because you're still single, but, uh, and that sort of like draws your attention away from what you're doing. Um, that sometimes can be difficult. I think I got my singleness in the sense that to look out what kind of movies I watch, not too romantic because it's easy to, you know, to go in this um, type of thinking. So I've also always made sure that I associate with um, a range of brothers and sisters from different age groups, but ones that have the similar sort of goals and they have a very positive outlook. It was available to teach others even for children, it was available for them to give comfort. Jesus was so busy in his ministry and focused. And when you're single, you're able to do that. You're able to concentrate more of your energy and effort into the ministry, into serving Jehovah more fully. It's not a matter of just being single. It's a matter of how you use it to support Jehovah's arrangement. It doesn't matter whatever age we are, if we are single, use the circumstances that you've got at the moment to do whatever you can because we're just living in a momentous time there's so much work for us to do just go and and pioneer or do something for jehovah and wait for him to surprise you you can use this time to do all sorts of different things in Jehovah's service at the moment. There's so many opportunities open up for single ones, including single sisters now, going where the need's greater, moving to different countries, serving in Bethel. So while you've got these circumstances, use the time now because it's, it's wonderful. Many of us here have some measure of authority, perhaps as husbands, parents, elders in the congregation. How will we manifest that measure of authority? Will we make it easy for our brothers and sisters to subject themselves to it? You wives, you show imitation of Jesus when you humbly subject yourself to your husbands. Brothers in the congregation, you demonstrate lowliness of heart like Jesus when you're obedient to the elders in the congregation. And your elders in the congregation Subject yourselves in humility to organizational arrangements and representatives. That's how we imitate these two perfect examples of humility. Hey, Helen, got a second? What do you want, Susan? Helen, I feel like I must have done something to hurt you. 
And I want to apologize if I have. Is there something wrong? I guess you had some more of the friends over last night? Well, yes, a few. Do you mind telling me why I'm never invited? Helen, I'm sorry. I never thought... Never thought what? That I would have noticed how many times you've done this to me. Well, I've noticed. Yesterday makes the third time in the last couple of months that you've had people to your home without me. Not to mention the four other times earlier this year. I'm so sorry, Helen. I didn't mean to slight you in any way. And I promise, it was nothing personal. Nothing personal? How can you invite everybody in the congregation over to your home for a good time, except me, and say that it's nothing personal? Good evening, brothers and sisters. We invite you to please find your seats. Our meeting is about to begin. Oh, Sister Buddha, please. And I was really giving this some thought, and it makes me feel privileged to be entrusted with such a serious responsibility by the Master Jesus. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you are doing, work at it whole sold. So this really moves me to diligently work hard to make disciples by using the tools provided by the faithful and discreet slave. Excellent. Appreciate those expressions. Now, there's no doubt that the talents are very, very important and of great concern to the master. But after all these years, is he still concerned? Note, if you will, the new subheading, doing business with the talents in the time of the end. worship Jehovah 24 7 don't we so we have to make sure that our form of worship that we present to Jehovah is always acceptable to him second Jesus did not tolerate commercial transactions at the temple remember what he exclaimed take these things away from here so let me ask you this question would it be respectful then for us to use the kingdom hall as a sort of depot for dropping off commercial products or as a money-making distribution center. Something to think about, isn't it? Uh, could you ever imagine Jesus viewing his brothers and sisters, viewing you as just a prospective customer? Would you like to see a preview? <laughs> okay. Well, let's watch. When I see other girls with their boyfriends, I want that too. Can I buy you something to drink? My treat. Anything. Wait, he's not baptized? I thought you knew that. And no, I just assumed. I feel like I have my goals, and I don't think you're on the same page. I can never be with someone that expects perfection. It seems like everyone's found someone but me. We just weren't right for each other. I know. I told her the same thing. You're a great guy. Are you about getting into something with him. His spirituality is Liz. We see things differently. Liz? Megan! Hey! How are you? Yes. Oh, it's so good to see you! So good to see you too! She's beautiful. So, what are you still doing here? What, what do you mean? I just thought you'd be doing something else by now. 
You're never home. You never spend any time with your family. Where's the sweet, supportive girl that I married? Whatever happened to reaching out and getting baptized? And you wonder why I'm never here? This conversation is over. That's not all that's over. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Fine. Any way you want. Why? 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 Enjoy your singleness while you have it. We did. And then if that special someone comes along, you'll get to start a whole new chapter in your life. What crew are you on? Uh, finishes. Sounds exciting. I don't know what it means either. <laughs> family will really enjoy it. So well done, Jehovah. Bless the project.